Let's talk about Unit 4, Geometric Terms and Constructions. Drawings contain almost entirely two-dimensional elements. These two-dimensional elements are used to describe three-dimensional things. So most objects, other than a, like a sheet of paper, are going to have length, width, and depth. This gives it volume. So typically, we're not going to draw that in 3D on a piece of paper. We use visualization to get it down to two dimensions. We're going to use line segments and circles a lot. Almost in everything on a drawing will be a line segment or some part of a circle. Line segments will form to make polygons. Polygons that have three sides are known as triangles. There's many different kinds of triangles, but the important ones are a right triangle, one with a 90 degree, or isosceles triangle, one with two equal sides, an equilateral triangle, a triangle with three equal sides, and a scalene triangle with three unequal sides. It's important to be able to spot the different kinds of triangles, as some drawings will require shop math. So you'll have to do some trigonometry to figure out a taper or a distance you need for machining operations. Quadrilaterals are four-sided polygons. So these are parallelograms, romb rhombus, rectangle, square, trapezoid, and trapezium. Regular polygons are anything with more than four sides. So this is your hexagons, octagons, you know, on up. They can have an uneven number of sides, but all the sides have to be equal, and all the angles between them must be equal. There's two ways to describe one of these, circumscribed and inscribed. If the circle, the imaginary circle that describes the regular polygon is totally within the polygon, it's known as circumscribed or across the flats. This is the dimension you need to know if you have a hex bolt and you want a wrench to fit it. The other kind is the inscribed. With an inscribed polygon, the polygon, the polygon is totally within the circle and only the outside edges are touching the circle. Let's talk about circles. A circle is a closed 360 degree curve where all points on the curve are an equal distance from a given point called the center point. The center point is typically used to locate the circle. So if you have a bolt hole pattern, you almost always locate it to the center of a circle, not to the outside. A radius is a distance from the center point to any point on the outside of the circle. The diameter is the distance across the circle through the center point. A radius is just half of a diameter. It's important that the diameter go through the center point, or else you'll have something called a chord. A chord is a line that goes through a circle but does not contact the center point. This does not give you the true size of the circle. A sector is an area bounded by two radii that is not 90 degrees or 180 degrees. A sector that is 90 degrees of a circle is called a quadrant. A sector that is 180 degrees of a circle is known as a semicircle. An arc is just the outside of the circle, which we'll use a lot when we get to radii and fillets. The basic forms used to create complex models are known as primitives. This consists of the right square prism, right triangular prism, right cylinder, right circular cone, sphere, and torus. These shapes can be added to each other and subtracted to each other in CAD systems to create complex 3D geometry. When dealing with more than one entity at a time, orientation terminology comes up. Geometric elements are often parallel, perpendicular, or tangent to each other, and this can occur in 2D and 3D. Parallel means the elements never intersect, even if extended infinitely. Perpendicular means two elements form a right 90 degree angle with each other. So this can be perpendicular lines, 
a plane can be perpendicular to another plane or to a line. Circles and cylinders have their own terminology for orientation. Two circles that share a common center point are known as concentric, whereas two circles that don't share a common center point are excent, eccentric. A cylinder that shares a center point or a center line with another cylinder is known as coaxial. You'll he hear this flip-flopped. People use coaxial when they mean concentric and concentric when they mean coaxial. But just remember, concentric is for two dimensions, coaxial is for three dimensions. Let's talk about tangent. Tangent is a relationship between features best described as sharing one point. If you think about an uh, automobile and the tires and the ground, the tire is theoretically only touching one point on the ground. If you drew a line from that point to the center of the, the wheel, the hub, you would have a right triangle. It would be perpendicular to the ground. In two-dimensional terms, a straight line is tangent to a circle. If it touches the circle at only one point, it does not intersect the circle again, even if extended. This shared point is called the point of tangency. For a line and circle, the point of tangency is always found at the end of a line drawn perpendicular to the line from the center point of the arc or circle. Circles and radii can be tangent to each other. It just means that two circles are only sharing one point. So think about a snowman, right? A perfect snowman. The top ball would be on top of the bottom one, and they'd only share one point. In addition, three-dimensional shapes can have tangencies. Think about a tennis ball on the ground. A perfect tennis ball would only be touching the ground at one point. Another geometric shape you're going to run into is something called a conic section. There are several different kinds of conic sections, but they're all developed from a plane slicing through a cone. Now these are described with mathematical equations. If you remember the quadratic equation that describes a parabola. These are used in engineering for things like bridges or curves, something like the headlight of a car. It's important to know the difference between a regular circle or a conic section like an ellipse or a parabola. They're not quite the same thing as an arc or a circle. Another important geometrical shape is the helix, which is generated by rotating a point about an axis while moving it along the axis. So everybody's familiar with the screws thread. This follows a typical helix. Springs also use a helix. It's important to recognize them, although typically when they're on a drawing, there'll be a simplified representation. An involute is used almost exclusively in gear teeth. It is the path a point follows if it is attached to the end of a string and the string is unwound from a cylinder. What ends up happening is as gear teeth are spinning, it's maintaining a point of tangency instead of sliding. So it's the most efficient way the teeth can touch each other and transmit power. The last shape we'll talk about are splines. Splines are curved lines that don't fit into any of the categories we've talked about. The definition of spline is a curved line that smoothly fits between a series of points. They can be any wacky shape. They could be closed or open. They're typically done with a CAD system, and usually they're called B splines or Bezier curves. There's different kinds of computer splines, so if you ever see one on a drawing, you're probably going to need the actual CAD model to extract the formulas that drive the splines.